So scholarly versus non-scholarly sources. This is an issue that comes up when students are asked to use scholarly or academic sources to support papers that they write in school. And some people intuitively pick up, yep, this is academic scholarly versus what is not. And other people want the criteria breakdown so that they can do a thorough analysis. So let's go over what makes a source scholarly or academic versus everything else. So the criteria for scholarly sources is that they will have an expert author or authors. So the people are writing in their area of expertise. They are writing for other experts in the field. So their audience is not the general public, not students, but other people working and researching in their field. So for example, if a medical uh, doctor is writing about, oh, let's say COVID-19, uh, he or she will be writing for other medical doctors and medical researchers to advance the field of knowledge in that area. The purpose is going to be to inform or very occasionally to persuade. It is never to entertain the reader, so you're not going to have pictures and interesting things to look at. They're going to be very dry uh, publications. There will always be a date of publication, so you will never have N period, D period, or no date as an option for uh, scholarly sources. They will have a reference page where they're citing sources that they have used to research and support the topic. They will have some kind of in-text citation, whether that's using APA, MLA, some other version like uh, Turabian or CMS that has footnotes citing the sources where relevant in the uh, document. They will definitely have more than one source of information. For a five-page um, journal article, for example, it's not unusual for them to have 30 sources of information, most of which are scholarly or academic themselves. The purpose is going to be, again, advancing knowledge on that topic for that field. So there's no uh, personal gain other than um, getting recognized for doing good work. There should be no conflict of interest in selling things, getting people to support things uh, for like monetary or financial gain. And it should always be refereed in some way. So refereed meaning there could be a peer review process where the document is sent out to experts in the field to say, hey, is this a good uh, article? Is this a good topic? Should we publish this or not? And or there should be some kind of editor or board of editors verifying and accepting the source. So scholarly sources are sometimes called peer-reviewed and academic sources or refereed sources. Non-scholarly sources are also called popular or mainstream or non-academic. And just because a source is not scholarly does not mean that it is not a good source of information and that it can't be used in a college level research paper. Uh, it just means that you need to more carefully evaluate the source for accuracy, currency, relevancy, bias, and intent, uh, whereas you can be a little less concerned with those when looking at academic sources. So scholarly, there are three types of sources that are always considered academic and scholarly. The first one is the most popular most common one, which is academic journal articles, and these are great because they are short, usually between 2 and 30 pages in length. They're going to be very focused on a specific topic, so it really lets you dig in and get a lot of information very quickly. And they're also relatively easy to find in um, academic libraries, so you can find them in library databases very easily and in fact you can often filter specifically for academic journal articles or peer-reviewed uh, sources. Scholarly or academic books 
note these are not textbooks, can occasionally be considered scholarly. And again, it's measured by the criteria listed above. Is it written by an expert for other experts? Is it a collection of previously published journal articles, for example? And then lastly, dissertations are always considered scholarly because you have a new practitioner in the field writing a book-length work of original research that is reviewed and accepted by other experts in the field. Some types of sources where it really depends on uh, the individual source and analysis of if it meets that criteria would be government reports. So some government reports are written by experts for experts to advance knowledge in the field uh, with some kind of review process, and those would be considered scholarly. The same is true of nonprofit organization reports. So for example, with government reports, you might have the CDC uh, putting out uh, research studies for experts, by experts, and nonprofit organizations like Mayo Clinic might be putting out uh, professional uh, expert written expert audience reports. Nonfiction books occasionally, uh, fairly rarely, are um, academic. So again, it has to meet all the criteria above. We're not talking about eat, pray, love here. And a thesis statement, which is a book length work of original research by a master's student, could possibly be scholarly. Uh, however, there are some examples, like a Master's of Fine Arts uh, degree would not have a scholarly thesis. And then some advanced college-level, graduate-level textbooks can be um, academic scholarly sources if they, again, are meeting the criteria of being written for experts, by experts, uh, being reviewed before being published in the field. And then there are tons of sources that are not scholarly. And again, this is not because they're bad sources. You can have good sources of information that are not scholarly, but they do not meet the requirement of being scholarly or academic sources. So they lack one or more of the criteria that we went over above. <clears throat> so for example, fiction books, never scholarly. Newspaper articles, can be good sources of information on what's going on right now, but they're not scholarly. They're not written by experts. They're written for a general audience. There are few, if any, sources cited, etc. Poems can be literary. They can be great works of art, but they are not scholarly. Magazine articles, just like newspaper articles, uh, they can be more in-depth, a little less timely compared to newspaper articles, but again, they're normally not written by experts for experts. There's more of an entertainment angle in there as well. Personal website, a graduate student's class paper, speech, um, a Wikipedia article. Note in general, never use Wikipedia for school papers unless you're writing about the topic of wikis <laughs> uh, because Wikipedia just can't be trusted. Uh, court testimony. It's a legal document. It can be helpful when you're writing a paper, but it's not considered a scholarly source. So it's not written by experts for experts. Um, an organization's website is not scholarly, right? So the Mayo Clinic, while they do have doctors and researchers putting out uh, formal research papers for other experts in the field, their website itself is not it's not peer-reviewed, it's not written by experts for experts, etc. There's no uh, peer review before publication. Introductory level college books are not uh, scholarly. Again, think about who they're written for. They may or may not be written by experts. Usually they're not written by experts. Uh, but they are definitely written for entry level uh, people just entering into the field, not people who are experts or have studied uh, previously or as in-depth in the field. Personal interviews, trade magazines, uh, business reports, PowerPoints, a personal account of an event, that would be an anecdote, not scholarly. Encyclopedia article written by English majors typically, not by experts, not written for experts, written for a general audience. YouTube videos, etc. So you can see how 
there are lots of types of sources out there that could potentially be useful to you when writing a college level paper, but they are not necessarily uh, scholarly or academic, right? So again, you have some that are never scholarly, some where it depends, you have to do a closer analysis, and then some that are generally always considered scholarly. So let's take a peek. What types of sources are these? All right. We're going to take a look at a few different sources and determine what type of source they are and if they are scholarly or not. So looking at source number one here, it says it's a review article, Resistance to Antibiotics. Are we in the post-antibiotic era? And we can see that it has an abstract, which is a usually a one paragraph summary of the entire paper before it gets into the introduction here. And it's from the Archives of Medical Research. And there's information here about the date it was published, the volume, and the page range. And if you look this over, obviously you'll be using the whole source, not just the first page of it. Uh, but just by looking over the first page, you can tell that this is a journal article. So type of source. Under type of source, we're going to put journal article. And ways that we can tell that is we could look up what the Archives of Medical Research uh, is, and it's a journal. We could look up the title of the article itself the structure of it having an abstract and then going into an introduction is actually the standard uh, article format usually there'll be an abstract then introduction review of literature then there'll be a methodology section a results section and then a discussion and or conclusion section and if you read this, um, it usually journal articles have elevated language, um, even when they're doing their best to keep it as plain language as possible. So if you read over this, you'll see that um, some of it is a little bit elevated for like general audiences. So, although this one does not seem to be too bad. So all journal articles are considered scholarly or academic. So this would be a scholarly um, or academic article. So this would count if your instructor says, hey, you need to use so many uh, academic sources or scholarly sources. This would count as one of them. All right, on to the next example. We have, uh, it's about alien hand syndrome, which is a medical issue. And you can see uh, it just dives right into uh, defining and describing it and you can tell from the upper left hand corner that this is a Wikipedia article so I would put down that this is a Wikipedia article and Wikipedia articles are not scholarly and generally should not be used in college level papers because anybody can write anything on Wikipedia and it relies on community trust and interest in improving uh, the material that's on there. So unfortunately, we just can't trust the information on Wikipedia. Although some studies have shown that it's about as accurate as an encyclopedia article. <laughs> so, all right, source number three here. We can see it's from the Mayo Clinic. The article is titled Oral Thrush. And oral thrush, also called oral candidiasis, I don't know, <laughs> is a condition in which the fungus accumulates on the lining of your mouth, etc. Uh, there's advertisements. You can request an appointment. So this would definitely be aimed toward a general audience or toward patients of the Mayo Clinic. So this would be a nonprofit website um, article or web page and these are never scholarly so it's not scholarly it can have good information but it's not peer-reviewed it's not written by experts for experts 
All right, on to number four, High Emotions in the Dentist Chair, written in 1985. It's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, it's an article from the Times Print Archive. And we can see here it's from the New York Times. So the New York Times is a newspaper. And so it's a newspaper article, in this case being given to the reader online. And those are not scholarly. So remember, newspaper articles, they're good for showing you uh, high-level information in the moment, what's going on uh, in the world, but it's not written by experts for experts. All right, the next one is a YouTube video. And we can see it's called Antibiotics and You. And so this would be a YouTube video. Pretty easy to answer there. And YouTube videos are not scholarly. They're put up by anybody. I think you can find some really poor YouTube videos. They're not reviewed by anybody. Uh, even if they're put up for or, uh, by experts, they're not targeting expert audiences. Although they can have good information, right? If they're put up by experts and they cite their sources and they give you good information, you can still use them in college papers. It's just that it's not considered a scholarly source. All right, so here we have Time, which if you're familiar, it's Time Magazine. And the article is, Vitamins and Supplements Can't Replace a Balanced Diet, study says. And you can tell it's geared toward uh, entertaining people a little bit at least because it has a nice picture. It's got advertisements, um, other things that you might be interested in as a reader. So it's a magazine article. And if you didn't know what time, what type of publication time was, you could also Google it. Uh, although that one might be tough <laughs> to, uh, if you just Google time and <laughs> get the right information. And magazine articles are not scholarly. And the last one here from the National Institutes of Health, and it's about red, uh, red meat heart disease link involves gut microbes, and it's uh, NIH Research Matters. And though the NIH does put out some scholarly sources, this is not an example of one. This is a government uh, website article or web page, and it is not scholarly. So it may or may not be written by experts, but it's written for a general audience. And again, it's got pictures, and it's trying to be interesting. It's a low-level uh, description of uh, probably a research paper, but it's meant for a general audience, not for other uh, research scientists or doctors.